Hey guys, it's been a while since we've done this. Peace and blessings. So Apple's WWDC 2014 got underway yesterday, that time of the year when Apple gets to the stage to announce and tease new predominantly software announcements that are coming later in the year. I'm M. Kwan, tech commentator and editor of Aurora TV, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the top 10 announcements from Apple's event. So Apple began with OS X updates, including the naming of its latest dubbed OS X Yosemite. Uh, Craig Federigo took to the stage for this, as he did for most of the keynote. But essentially, OS X Yosemite is a visual revamp to the desktop OS. It's much more in line with some of the changes we've seen with iOS 7. Clean, translucent, much more flatter design, and revamped icons. There's a bunch of new features, but one that was interesting was continuity essentially uh, a cross-platform uh, feature that allows uh, Apple product users to switch tasks from mobile, such as iPhone, iPad, to desktop and vice versa. So think, you're working on an email on your iPad, you put it down, you move over to your desktop and it's there, you finish it, send it off. Next is pro proximity awareness, which is almost an iOS feature in that it allows you to take calls via your desktop or make calls through your desktop that's routed through your iOS device. Now this works really well for those that are absorbed in the Apple ecosystem. Those that have a Mac and an iPad, an iPhone, um, and you know those that have multiple devices. And Federigo demoed this with Apple's latest employee, Dr. Dre. Check this out. By the way, I'm glad you called. I hear Tim gets in pretty early. What time does that show up for work? <laughs> if you want to beat Tim into the office, it'd be about 4.30. But I think, uh, you know, uh, orientation, new employee orientation starts at 9. So, uh, and you don't want to miss the free t-shirt, so I'd shoot for nine. <laughs> Next, Apple showed us iOS 8. Not a lot of visual changes that were apparent in the demo, but an interesting new features under the hood that had to polish and overall round up the new iOS. Amongst these are notifications, allows you to make actions on incoming notifications, either from the drop-down or as they come in. Next is widgets, finally, in Notification Center. This has finally been opened up to third-party devs, ironically, very Android-ish. Uh, <clears throat> what was interesting was the amount of time that Tim Cook took in digging at Android and then proceeded to introduce features that were somewhat associated with the platform. But anyway, Behind the scenes, there are extensions, Apple allowing third-party devs more access to the main architecture of iOS. So Instagram, Pinterest, sharing can be built into an app and also allow third-party apps to communicate with each other. Um, and that's very, very big. Remember Steve Jobs' insistence not to open up the main system? Well, that seems to have changed. Another huge change is third-party keyboards that are coming to the platform. So think swipe now available on your iOS device and that should make a lot of users happy, myself included. Slight addition to multitasking is the ability to get your favorite people from the double tap on the home button. Again, another additional feature added. iMessage has also had an update and that's had the inclusion of both video and voice snippets and allows uh, users the ability to update the way that they manage their group messages. So they can remove themselves from groups and they can also um, mute particular group discussions. Very reminiscent of WhatsApp. Siri has also been updated that allows you now to recognize songs and purchase them directly through the Siri app itself. Also another borrowed feature is the ability to have Siri listen simply by saying, hey Siri, without touching your device. It's pretty neat, and I for one am glad to see that coming to iOS. New gestures to mail allow you to work on the move uh, much more quicker, allowing you to answer incoming mail, you can swipe down, you can check information. It's definitely something that's going to help heavy mail users uh, multitasking, including myself. Finally, Apple dropped a new coding language. And this is odd because for many, non-developers watching this, they, they, they may have been confused about this. Uh, but in essence, it's probably one of the biggest stories to come out of the developer conference. The fact that developers can now code in a language called Swift, built on Coco, allowing easier coding processes and essentially opening the doors to a higher level of app development that can be achieved. So it's a win-win situation for both devs, for Apple and for the end users.
So there you have it. To summarize, this was very much a developer-orientated keynote. Apple seemed to have polished and refined both OS X and iOS, and that's key because for many, the user experience is something that has a day-to-day -day impact on how they use their devices, and so these changes are good to see. No hardware announcements, though. Apple did mention Health Toolkit, which is pretty much uh, a given now that a health uh, tracker is on its way. Anyway, was there anything in the announcements that I missed out, anything that was key for you? If there was, then remember to leave a comment down below. That's all the information from me. And if you want updated information, then hit the link below and follow me on Twitter as I share more information. Thank you once again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this summary. Until next time, peace and blessings.